Okay, in this tutorial we're going to learn how to build a Caesar Cipher app. In addition to being your first look at an encryption algorithm, we're also going to introduce a couple of new programming concepts, uh, namely the idea of using local variables instead of global variables, and secondly, the definition of a function. A function is a procedure that returns or produces a value. You can see the app is up and running in my device. The user interface is fairly straightforward. The only thing I'll call attention to here is we have it set in portrait mode and notice that the shift text box takes only numbers and the reason for that is the Caesar cipher key is a number like the number three or the number five. Okay so these are the blocks. I'm going to walk through at a high level first and then we'll drill down into the details. The main work we're going to have to do is to code the Caesar encrypt function. All right, we have two global variables. We have three local variables here, and I'll talk about those in a moment. Uh, the plain alphabet is the alphabet from A to Z, lowercase. This is a constant, which is why we've given it a name with all uppercase. That's our convention. This is not going to change in the app at all. We also have a cipher alphabet variable. It starts out as the empty string, but this is something we're going to construct each time we're asked to encrypt a message. Let's look at the button encrypt handler. When the button is clicked, whatever is typed in the plain text box over here will be passed along with the shift, which is typed here, to the Caesar encrypt function. And the Caesar encrypt function will encrypt it and give us back an encryption. So notice that the Caesar encrypt function is going to give us back a value and I can simply plug that value right in here and it's going to appear in our interface in the ciphertext text box. Okay, let's now look at the init cipher alphabet. This is where we construct the Caesar alphabet. This is already coded. It will work and I want to just walk you through it. However, I'm going to use as an example these strings over here. These are different segments of text. For a shift of three, we want to produce this cipher alphabet, right? D through C. And we want to produce it from this plain alphabet by splitting the alphabet at the shift. So if the shift is three, then what if we split it after the A, B, C into these two segments and then join the segments together using a join block in this way. The right-hand segment goes first. We would produce this alphabet. So let's see now how to do that with some blocks. What we're going to use a, the segment function. I don't know whether you've used this before. If you haven't, it's in the text drawer. Here it is. And we're calling a function here. It's going to produce us a value. And basically what this function does is it takes a string of text, in this case the whole plain alphabet, so this alphabet right here, tells it how to produce a segment giving a starting point and a length. So in this case, the starting point is shift plus one. Let's suppose the shift is three, then the starting point is four, and the length is 26 minus three, so the length is 23. Well, that will produce this segment right here. So that is starting at the fourth letter, A, B, C, D, giving us 23 letters from that point. This segment starts with the same alphabet, but it tells it to produce a segment starting at one of length three. So that's just A, B, C. We join them together the way I've showed you here. We also convert them to uppercase and then we assign them to the cipher alphabet over here. We can actually test this calling that procedure. Let's do it over here in the button click and let's pass it a shift of three and make sure that it produces the right result. And now I'm going to tap the encrypt button. It isn't doing any input but it will show the alphabet in this label one text, which is kind of like a debug label. So that works nicely. Let's now work on the Caesar encrypt function. So Caesar encrypt has to go through the letters in the plain text uh, using an alphabet that's created with this shift, using this cipher alphabet, and it needs to replace each plain text letter with a corresponding letter from the cipher alphabet. Now, this is a function definition. Notice the difference between this and a procedure definition. Both definition blocks are in the procedures drawer. Function definition block has this result slot, and that's because functions produce values, and we have to return the value that they produce. 
So, like over here, it can be plugged in to some other expression or to some other variable. Now, our Caesar encrypt function takes the plain text from the text box and the shift from the text box, and it has to produce that encryption. We need some variables to perform this task, and I'm going to define them as local variables. And here I'm using the initialize local variable uh, block, which I got from here, and I expanded it using its mutator so I can have three. This is the initialize local block that you want to use when you are defining a function because you have to plug it into this result slot. If I were defining a procedure, I would use this initialize local. I can put this into an event handler like that, or I can put it into a procedure declaration like over here. But for functions, I need to use this one. Let me plug that in, and now let me explain what these three variables are. CHR is going to be the case character. So we're going to go through the plain text character by character and we're going to pull out the character. So if this were my plain text and I wanted to pull the first character out, this would be the letter D. Then I need to look up the letter D in this alphabet and I need to find out that, well, it's the fourth letter in the alphabet. That's the index variable. The index tells you where the character is located in the alphabet. Then the cipher text, this is the text we're going to be constructing letter by letter. Each time we find a substitute, we're going to add it using the join block to the cipher text. And then we're going to return that cipher text. Local variables are the same as global variables with one big exception. They can only be used in their local scope. And the brown block defines the local scope. So these three variables can only be used here. This is a huge advantage because you don't have to worry about what's happening to these variables elsewhere. If somebody has changed them or thrown them away or what have you. The um, other advantage of that is that really we only need these variables while we're doing this operation. So why have them around sitting around in memory when we're not even needing them? Okay, so this is even more efficient in terms of the way it's using memory. Given these local variables, I want to call an init cipher alphabet and I can't do that. So I need to convert the variable scope using this do block. So this do block converts this scope, which is an expression scope. I can plug expressions in here like that one, or I can do addition here. But I can't do a statement, like I can't call a procedure there. So I need to convert this expression scope into one that allows me to do statements, like calling a procedure. All right, so I'm going to call a knit cipher alphabet here, and I'm going to pass it the shift from here. Given that, I can actually go test this now. It's not a complete function, but it, it's partially done. So let me try a shift of 5. We'll tap encrypt, and it should produce an alphabet that's been shifted by 5, and certainly it does that. All right, so the next thing we need to do now is we need to iterate through the plain text, letter by letter. So we need a loop. There's two for loops. This one is for each item in a list, so we don't want that. We want for each number. And the number here is going to be the index of the plain text. So we're going to call that k. We're going to get the case character of the plain text each time through this loop. So we should go from 1 to the length of our plain text. So let's get the length function here, and we want the length of the plain text. And what we're going to do each time is we're going to grab that case character and assign it to CHR, this local variable. Well, how do we grab the case character? Well, we're going to have to use our segment block again, just like we did when we were constructing the alphabet. And this time, the segment that I want to grab this out of is the plain text message. And I want to start at K. Okay, so if K is 1, I'm starting at the first letter. If K is 2, I'm starting at the second letter. And the length I want is just one. I just want one character. That's the letter I'm taking out of the plain text message. The next thing I need to do is I need to look up that letter in the plain alphabet. Like suppose it was the letter E. Then I have to find where E is in the alphabet. So to do that, I'm going to use another text processing function, the starts at function. So I want to know where this character, where this piece starts in the plain alphabet. That'll tell me its index. So I'm going to assign that as the index of the letter I just pulled out of the plain text. That's its plain text alphabet index. For the letters A through Z, like A is at index 1, E is at index 5, but where is the space or where's the 
comma. They're at no location in here. And in that case, this starts at will return zero. We have to worry about that because we can't space or comma out of the cipher alphabet. There isn't one there. So we're going to check if the character that we just got from the plain text isn't in the plain text alphabet, then we're going to simply pass it along into the cipher text. So if this index equals zero, then our cipher text is simply going to be created by joining current value of cipher text with this letter that we just grabbed. Okay, so we're concatenating cipher text and the character here. And we're just passing the character through. So suppose it's a space, it'll pass the space through. On the other hand, if it's not zero, that means we found a letter in the alphabet. And in that case, we have to concatenate the corresponding letter from the cipher alphabet. So again here, we're going to use our segment block. We're taking this out of the cipher alphabet now, uh, starting at the index, and the length is going to be 1. So we're taking the corresponding cipher letter from the cipher alphabet and concatenating it to our cipher text. So okay, for each index of the plain text, get the character at that index, look up the index of that character in the plain alphabet. If that is 0, then just add that character, whatever it is, to the cipher text. If it's not 0, meaning if we found a corresponding letter in the plain alphabet, then concatenate the corresponding letter from the cipher alphabet to the cipher text. Okay, and when we're done with this, we, of course, we have to return the cipher text. This is the result we're producing. And this is the result that's going to be plugged in here into the text box. Okay, so let's test this. So I typed in hello world. Let me give it a shift of three and let's uh, encrypt that. Okay, so we know that hello encrypts the K-H-O-O-R and world encrypts to that. So that's our Caesar Cipher app, um, at least the encrypt part of it. Now your job is going to be to define the Caesar decrypt function and implement the button decrypt so that you can decrypt secret messages.